Fusion. It's the nuclear process that powers the sun, but can we harness it here on Earth to generate power? I'm Mateen Durrani, editor of Physics World, and I'm here at the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy in the UK, one of Europe's leading fusion labs. I'm about to talk to Chris Llewellyn Smith, former Director General of CERN, former head of the UK's fusion programme, and until last year, closely involved in the ITER fusion experiment being built in France. Chris, ITER is a huge international fusion experiment being built in France, but with costs ballooning to over 13 billion euros, can you justify so much money being spent on such a big project? Absolutely, yes. You've got to realise that sum is dwarfed by the scale of the problem we're trying to uh, tackle. It's dwarfed by the scale of the energy market, which is about $5 trillion a year. It's dwarfed by subsidies to renewables, which worldwide are about $45 billion. And even more, believe it or not, by subsidies to fossil fuels, which are running over 500 billion a year. We're getting 13.3 terawatts from fossil fuels right now. That number's going up. And if you ask what can replace them, let's look first at wind, bio, geothermal, and marine. If you push them to the absolute limit, I reckon you can't get more than seven terawatts. So there's going to be a big gap out there. So the three things I haven't mentioned are solar, nuclear fission and fusion, all of which have some problems. Solar, we've got to get the cost down, you've got to transmit it, we have to learn about storage. Nuclear, fine for a hundred years, but then we're going to need fast breeders to use the uranium more efficiently, it needs development. Fusion isn't there, but out there in the long run, those are the only three that can fill the gap. Of course we've got to use all the rest as much as we can, so we cannot afford not to develop fusion. But with costs continually rising, is there a point where you would say, stop, we cannot go on with this? If the cost of ITER goes up for some reason that says fusion power is going to cost three pounds a kilowatt hour, then we stop because it's never going to be viable. But if the cost of ITER goes up purely for some reason that's to do with ITER as a one-off, first-of-a-kind project, nothing to do with the eventual cost of fusion power, then we should pay. But Chris, if ITER fails to do what it set out to do, which is to create a deuterium tritium plasma that produces 10 times more power than is put in, what then? That will depend why it fails. Uh, if it fails for a reason that shows that fusion is never going to be viable as, source, as a source of energy, then of course we should quit. But if it fails because you know, there's something with ITER which we could change in the next device, wrong shape of the vacuum vessel, uh, you know, mistake of the manufacturing, then of course we should go on because the promise of fusion is so great. As a former chairman of the Council of ITER, what have been the biggest problems and tensions that have arisen as, as a result of the uh, project's international status with seven different partners? First of all, as I learned already at CERN, setting up international collaborations takes a lot of time. You have people who are not used to working together, they have to build familiarity. And in the case of ITER, it was worse than that in the sense that as well as the international organization in southern France, there's a so-called domestic agency in each of the seven parties which will be carrying out the procurement. All of those had to be set up from scratch. The people at the international organization who'd never worked together had to become familiar with each other. Then they had to establish relations with the uh, procurement agencies and then all these people had to learn to work with the council. That took time and that cost money. Secondly, the countries all wanted to be involved in a very wide, wide range of technologies. So a contract to build gyrotrons, for example, instead of going to one company in one country, maybe being split between three companies in three countries. Next, in negotiating the, the agreement, the partners hadn't worked together on something like this, and they were perhaps over diligent in protecting their own interests. So they got nervous, and they insisted that practically every decision has to be unanimous whereas consensus would have been okay. And finally, the EU is paying a very large fraction, 45%. And when the cost went up, it was very hard for the EU, which is a cumbersome, slow thing with 28 members, to respond. And this certainly frustrated the others and did make tensions. Finally, fusion's always been said to be a power source that's 30 years away. When do you realistically expect that we can actually build a power station that we can plug into the electricity grid? To build ITER, 10 years. Operate ITER to get confidence before we build a real power station, because ITER is only an experiment, 10 years, so that's 20 years. At that point, we're ready to build a device with turbines that could put power in the grid, a demonstrator, if 
if in parallel we've put money in developing the materials, the, the very different technologies, and uh, at the same time we've got on designing demo. It's not happening, so my prediction's already likely to be wrong. But if we did that, which we could technically, in 20 years we could be ready to build the first demonstrator, and in about 30 years, if the funding's there, we could have some fusion power on the grid. Of course, that's interesting, but what we really want to know is when can we go out and build 10, 20, 30, 40, have a real impact. That's the middle of the century at the earliest. I can't tell you the answer. The big challenge is going to be reliability. I'm sure we can make a fusion reactor, but it might only work 7% of the time. It's got to work 70%. In the end, we'll be able to do it, but I can't predict when, because we haven't not far enough down the track. Uh, I also can't predict when we can make it competitive, because it's technology under development, so I can't tell you what the cost will be, except that they don't look ridiculous, as far as we can tell. But I can't tell you what the competition will be, so what does it mean to say it's competitive? So plenty of challenges ahead still. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you. Thanks.